So for the last project I'm going to do for this tutorial is a small road crossing and it's going to be very improvised. So let's see if I manage or screw it up. So let's make a new component. Road crossing. And let's start with we're, we're actually for this project uh, we're going to work with the sub components this time so let's create a component uh, what we call base and uh, that way we can add the details like if you want um, if you want some signs or po sign poles or uh, some other features on it you can uh, make more components later and it's it's always a lot easier to start with components from the beginning it's really really hard to divide things when you have already worked on them for a while it's it's really tough to uh, divide them uh, so I really recommend that you uh, split it in components from the start think about what you want to do uh, or just divide them and uh, it's better to divide you can always add features and add bodies and stuff in a component later if you don't want to, uh, to have it split so with that said we take the joiner paste it paste it again and we want to rotate it so we select the origin hundred and eighty and we're gonna make this one two hundred millimeters so let's move this second joiner two hundred millimeters so now I'm actually for once going to extrude the entire entire track here uh, or maybe not uh, actually um, yeah that's hard to decide that depends on if you want the road to start uh, all the way out here or if you want the road to start a bit in, uh, I think we, we want at least one sleeper on each side and a narrower road. So let's do it as we did before. I'll work a little bit faster here because you've heard this several times now, so I will not explain every single step I will explain what's new so I will this time it's straight so I can use a normal extrude so I just mark the surfaces and click extrude there we have it and I need uh, the sleeper There we have it. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, this time I will just move this one. Let's say we move it um, there will be good, 20 millimeters. And I copy it, paste it. Now I can actually do like this. If I move it here, I see 175. Uh, 165, 155. That will place it in the same, uh, the same distance from the other side. So now we have our two sleepers. Uh, so let's join this together. Now we're going to create our um, road. So let's make a sketch on the vertical plane here so how long do we want the the road to go uh, I want 
wanted to go, yeah, that's good, 80 millimeters. And that's good, uh, 160 millimeter uh, totally. So let's make the edge uh, one millimeter. And here's the thing, we could actually we could actually make it go all the way to the track, but that that will not look good because it will not look like a track. So what I really recommend here is that you uh, you place it a little bit uh, a bit away from the track. And it just struck me that I don't want this to be totally straight. I want it to be curved. Uh, so let's actually make a make a spline here. And let's end it here, and I'll show you. I'll show you why. Um, now I can play around with uh, with these points a bit. Um, and this is a matter of personal preference, with how you want it to look. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, I will only draw one side now because they are going to be uh, they are going to be symmetrical. So I will draw this side and I will mirror it to the other side. So let's make sure. Uh, often uh, when in road crossings, often it's just uh, normal track that is embedded in the road, and there's usually there's usually a, a visible crack between or yeah, what do you say? There's a, there's a visible uh, area between the track and the road, so that you can see that it's actually a track. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see how much we want it to be visible. You could do you could you could have it go all the way down actually. Yeah, let's let's have it go all the way here. Um, yeah, it's your choice. You can you can just try and see how it looks. Let's have it go all the way down here. Then it's gonna look like we we dug a hole in the road and we placed a track there. So let's have it go there. And then on this side, here is the really important stuff. Uh, on the inside of the track, that's where the wheel goes. So you have to leave room for the wheel. And how much you leave really depends on your trains. Uh, so what I would recommend is that uh, take a look at your trains, measure the distance between the wheels, the inner side of the wheels, and make sure that uh, you leave enough space for the wheels because the wheels are not, uh, they are not perfectly aligned with the track. There has to be a gap between the wheel and the track and then it's the thickness of the wheel. So in this case I will leave uh, three millimeters on the inside. I know that will not look really perfect, but uh, at least for me, the functionality is uh, highest priority. So I will do like that. So let's go ahead and extrude this and see how it looks. I pressed E and then I choose. And then we can see that we, uh, we don't want this to start all the way back here at the start of the track. So what I usually do is I pull this one to the place where I want the road to start, or the the body that I'm going to extrude to start, or the cut if that's what I want to do. Fusion things I want to cut now, but I, I don't want to do that. I want to create a new body. So 40 millimeters is where I want it to start. So then I can click th the starting point here. I can click offset plane, and then I can enter that value, 40. So now it starts where I want it to start. And then if I'm lazy, if I don't want to calculate anything, I just draw it out here and I see, okay, 160 minus 40, so 120. Um, that's the easy way. That's why you, you have to stick with even number. That makes life easy. So let's click OK. I think that's going to look, uh, that's going to look all right, I think. So let's go ahead and mirror this body. So uh, Fusion already figured out because we had it selected. So 
if you start with a mirror button first that's okay you can click uh, the body later but make sure then that uh, there can be some issues because if uh, if you have faces selected then it's not going to work uh, because faces that's uh, basically a surface of a body so then you have to click in the in the drop down and select body then select the body and then mirror plane and mirror plane doesn't have to be a plane like this it can be it can actually be a surface so in this case we can click this surface and now fusion thinks we want to join and in this case i want to do that but in other cases you might not want to do that if if um if they're going to be different in some way, uh, then I recommend to choose a new body and then you can work with them separately. Uh, but in this case, uh, I'm going to join them. So there we have our road. And um, you can go ahead and you can... Uh, it's it's really easy to make a hole for... Uh, for um, if you want to have a sign pole or something here, you can just make a sketch on the bottom, click C for circle, and uh, draw a circle somewhere. Let's make it three millimeters. Click inside the circle and click extrude. There you have it. A hole for a, for a sign pole and you have to make sure that it's uh, as far away from the track as it needs to be so the train can pass and you can continue to build the details on this one I'm, I'm not going to do that right now because it's going to take too much time so I will end it right here um, and you can just use this and you can continue to do whatever you want with this and uh, we can just do one last thing we can uh, uh, I can show you that if you do something that you're not pleased with here in the timeline, you can actually remove things in the timeline as well. Uh, I will mark this um, hole that I did and the sketch because I don't want them and I can delete them. So there we are. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these. So we can export them as, uh, export it as one SDL and we can print it and we're going to call it track road crossing so there we have it that is the end of this tutorial and uh, I will include these that I made uh, in the project that I upload so you can have a look at them and you can also see in the history and also one important thing to keep in mind there is that um, you have to activate one of the components to see the history for that component. So for example, if I click here and activate, I see the entire history of this, uh, of all the components here. But if I click activate on the straight track and you can see, you can click here in the small circle, then I get the history for just this part. And uh, the visibility is still turned off now, it's on. Um, and often Fusion is actually able to also display the actual part um, that a certain feature here in the in the timeline in the history it refers to. Uh, but I've also noticed that it's uh, it can be tricky if there is a combine. Then in the history, Fusion will uh, will uh, highlight the combine because it cannot figure out where a, a feature comes from before the the uh, combine. That's at least my experience. Uh, maybe that will change in the future when they upgrade the software and they develop more features. But um, I think that is the case right now. Uh, yeah, you can actually see here when I click on this surface, uh, Fusion uh, displays this combine. Uh, even if this ca could be related to when we pasted um, uh, the sleeper into the project. So anyway, I think that's it. So yep, thanks for watching and uh, please create a lot of track and uh, I would be very happy if you want to upload things to Thingiverse. 
because I hope that this could become a community project and uh, the more fun parts that are uploaded and we can download and we can print uh, this could turn out into a really fun community project that's what it's meant to be so yeah thank you all. thanks for watching and please comment uh, write anything in the comment if you have some questions okay bye bye